Welcome to the North Dakota State Library's monthly webinar. I'm Angie Hauser and I'm the Continuing Education Coordinator here at the North Dakota State Library. A few housekeeping items before we begin. This webinar is being recorded and will be sent out in the next day or so. Additionally, the slides will be sent out for your reference later as well. All participants are muted. If you would like to ask a question, please use the chat box. I may not check the chat box during the webinar, but I will get to all the questions at the end of it. That being said, let's dive right in. When I was trying to think up a webinar for this month, the only thing that I kept coming back to was scan days. And even though we're the only state that calls them that, this is something that other states do or could easily implement. A couple of months ago, I did a webinar on our online archive, Digital Horizons, and I mentioned that a lot of the state library's items came from the public. Well, it is at scan days that we get those materials, so explaining what one is seemed appropriate. What we're going to go over today is what a scan day is, how this event is set up, items we receive, and what we bring to these events. I'll even discuss briefly what other institutions around the country are doing. What is a scan day? Scan day is an event that the North Dakota State Library puts on around the state in conjunction with public libraries or organizations. We are invited by interested libraries to come out and scan local history items. We do have some requirements that the library or organization needs to fulfill before we will come out for the event. These types of things will be discussed further on in this webinar. We do these events because we want to get the public involved in preserving their own history. And we found that the best way to do that is to teach them how. We came up with resources for our patrons that they can use when they're at home scanning their own items or if they choose to preserve their physical items. Through these resources, we are able to give examples of how they can preserve their family history without having to donate it to an institution. This is really helpful when it is a particularly precious piece of family history. We initially created this event because many of our institutions in our smaller rural communities just don't have the knowledge or resources for scanning events of their own for their patrons. Our goal is to support them and their communities in any way possible. To do that, in this case, we will go to them and bring with us flatbed scanners, laptops, and photography equipment in order to digitize whatever the patron may bring in or even whatever the library or organization would like for us to digitize. Scan days are also meant to help preserve public history and add to our regional archive Digital Horizons. The goal of Digital Horizons is to preserve the unique history of the region and collecting historical photographs and other items from the public plays a large part in continuing the mission of the archive. Without these events, one of the North Dakota State Library's collections simply would not exist. We pride ourselves on, our, on offering unique items to the public and share the sometimes bizarre history of our state. And we wouldn't be able to do that without the contributions of the public. Additionally, all of our local promotional materials for Digital Horizons come from photographs collected during scan day events. Without these events, our promotional materials would be fairly bland and probably unappealing. How do we set up this event? First, we require an invite from the library or organization. We won't just pop in on some unsuspecting library. We do take an active role in the process of being asked to come out. Some libraries don't know about the, this type of event, so we advertise scan days at the annual conference the state library puts on and at our annual statewide conference held by the North Dakota Library Association. Other times, our library development specialists will go out to their assigned libraries and let them know about the event while they are there. We also advertise it when we have a booth at non-library conferences and through webinars like this one. 
All of this is so that we can at least pique a library or organization's interest enough to open discussions about us coming out to their community. We want to make sure that everything is on the library's term. So we give them a selection of dates that work best for the digital initiatives team and they pick a day to host the scan day event. We do make sure that we don't have a scan day on a Monday and we try to avoid Fridays. We avoid Mondays because people tend to forget more things at the beginning of the week. And we also try to avoid Fridays so that we can dedicate enough time to the project. Because of our limited budget, we need to make sure every trip we take is beneficial to us and the library. So we have a sign-up sheet at each location and require at least five people be signed up for this event. This might not seem like a lot of people, but as a very rural state, getting five people from rural communities can be quite challenging. If you are already thinking about creating your own scan day, a tip for you is to enforce the sign-up requirement. We make sure that the librarian or the event planner know we will not be coming out if enough people have not signed up. When that happens, we give them a choice of other dates in the current year that might work for them, but usually many just say they'll try again next year. We generally have a four to five month window where we can do scan days in other communities due to the unpredictable weather of the state in the winter, which is why many of our communities that have to cancel end up saying they'll try again next year. Each person that signs up gets a 30 minute time slot with 10 to 15 items. If they want to bring more, they're welcome to sign up for another available time slot or come back when there is free time. Because of the rural nature of our state, we also welcome local museums or historical societies to come to scan days. We allow them to sign up for two consecutive 30 minute time slots right away and they can bring 20 to 30 items. Many of these institutions have wonderful items, but don't even know where to start with a digital repository. These events allow us to open the lines of communication with these organizations so that we can help them with the process of creating a digital repository and scanning items should they choose to continue with it. The maximum number of items is both important to be firm on and to be slightly fl flexible on. If you have people signed up back to back, then you need to be firm on the maximum number of items. The reason why I say you should also be flexible is that if you have time to do all the items, then just do them. Whether the extra time comes because no one is signed up after that current patron, or the previous patron only had one item giving you that extra time, you should do your best to accommodate everybody. Most people are very gracious about the item limit and don't push it. In the advertisements for the event and the sign-up sheets, we do let them know the limit ahead of time so that they can come prepared. Some people will push this limit with a multi-page document. Depending on your timing, use your discretion if you have time to scan it. An example of a multi-page document could be a ration book, newspaper, or even a family tree in history. On a side note, we do not scan full books or large multi-page documents like scrapbooks or anything over 10 pages while we were on the road. If we want it in the archive, we offer to take the item back with us to the library and then mail it back when we are done with the scans. If the patron does not want to send it along, then we politely decline to scan it. Remember to treat these items like a donation to your institution. You don't have to scan the item or use it if it is scanned. It is your choice as the digital archivist. For us, even if we know we won't use a photograph or two in the stack of 10 to 15 items, we will still scan all of it for our patrons. That way they can have it and we'll come back with more items that we'll, we will probably use next time. What do we do with the items from the scan days? One thing about scan days is that we accept all types of items. 
We have even sent our photographer out to important buildings in the town before so that we can get a digital record of that piece of history. So far, we haven't gotten an object that we wouldn't want to have a digital copy of, but I suppose it could happen. Since we accept all types of items, we do definitely keep privacy in mind. So if something has, say, a social security number or a serial number in the case of maybe a war bond, then we will blur out these numbers before we put them into the digital repository. Librarians and archivists know that privacy is a big concern. Therefore, even when doing these events, it is important to make a note of the items that could raise a privacy issue and the items that the patron may point out has private information. In a scan day, the big thing is that the community members that bring us their items get to keep them at the end of the day. If you do want to donate the items, but because the State Library does not have any archival facilities, we encourage the patron to get a hold of the State Historical Society. Some people are initially hesitant to come to scan days because they want to keep their items. So once they find out that they get to keep them and will just scan them, we actually get more participants. We do try to make this information known ahead of time, but it doesn't always work. Each participant gets a flash drive of their items after the event to keep. If we do more than one scan day at that location, and if the patron wants to just bring back their, pre their flash drive received previously, we'll just continue to add to it. If they forget to bring their flash drive, we give them another one for their new items and the new event. These items are then added to our online archive. As previously stated, these events are done to preserve the local history of our state. The scanned items are gone through after each event and are then uploaded into our collection on Digital Horizons, which then gets ingested into the Digital Public Library of America. We want to share our items with as many people as possible that are interested in learning about the state and its history. The items that we scan at these events can be varied, but we prefer that they have a North Dakota connection or a connection to the region. Though we will not turn away any, of the, any item, even if it has nothing to do with the state or the region, it's important to add to a public history whenever you get the opportunity. So we're moving right along to what do you need? Um, basically, what do we bring to uh, these types of events? All right, sorry. So what type of things do we bring to these events? When doing a scan day or any event where you are going to put items up online, it is best to cover your basis and get permission to do so. The release forms that we have are in very plain language and basically say that the participant knows that some or all of their materials will go up online and be available for the public to research. We do occasionally get the patron who wants their items scanned, but does not want to give us permission to upload them and doesn't want, to, want us to keep a digital copy of the item. In those cases, we explain that the reason for the scan day is to add to the public history of the region and secondarily is to scan patrons' items. We decline to scan their items unless there are at least a few images they would be willing to let us use. If that is the case, we will scan all 10 to 15 items, but there needs to be some that we can use in the archive. Three people from the State Library facilitate the scan day events. We have two people who scan and one who is a photographer. For scanning photographs or regular sized documents, we use two flatbed scanners and our laptops. The scanners that we have available to us are the Epson Perfection V750 Pro and the Epson Perfection V600. When we travel with them, we have them in hardback suitcases with foam cutouts around them so they are snug in the suitcase and protected during travel. I highly suggest getting a suitcase of some kind if you are going to travel with a scanner. It prevents damage to the scanner and you won't forget the scanner anywhere if it's in a large suitcase. The flash drives that we give away to patrons with their materials on them are eight gigabytes. 
I would also like to mention that we scan a copy of the permission release form and put it on that flash drive with the other items for the patron. We do this even if the patron only brought in one item. This way, they have their own copy of the release that can be referenced if they or their family has questions. Additionally, we have a pop-up photo box and different colored backgrounds for our photographer when she needs to photograph items. The camera that we use is a Nikon, and I unfortunately don't know what type of Nikon it is, but it isn't a point-and-click camera, but it also isn't you know, the highest level of camera out there either. It's a nice medium. The items that could be photographed range from plaques and trophies to documents too large to put on a flatbed scanner. For the documents, she usually uses a neutral background cloth that can be put down. And for the three-dimensional items, she utilizes the pop-up photo box. Obviously, none of this would be possible without willing participants. Keeping the patron happy makes sure that they tell other people about the event and that they bring more items when and if we come back. So far, we haven't had a patron who didn't appreciate this type of event, but I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Finally, we do require another small thing from the library or, or organization. We require that the library or the hosting place to have a space for us to use that has tables and access to electricity. That and advertising the events and getting signups is all the library or the librarian or the event coordinator is required to do. So what are others around the country doing? Events like scan days can be tailored to fit any type of budget. These are what some others are doing to preserve local history. The Minnesota Digital Library has a program called Scan for Keeps. The Minnesota Digital Library sends out a kit that is specifically for scanning events. According to their website, each kit comes with an Epson Perfection V850 Pro photo scanner, Dell laptop, Pelican 1650 case and lid organizer, power strips, and instructions for all of the equipment. Minnesota has two kits available, and they mail them out to libraries throughout the state that would like to host their own scanning events. The kits are checked out like one would check out a book, though they have a longer checkout period than a regular book. The website also provides all of the documentation that the library should get from the patron, such as the release for the items, uh, any metadata forms, etc. As well as, and the website also offers potential partnership ideas. The University of North Carolina has what they call an archivist in a backpack program. They have two types of backpacks that are sent out to libraries. The first is for grassroots oral histories. It comes with a recorder, microphone, how-to sheet, and other useful items that are delivered in the backpack. It also has some suggestions on what to do with the oral histories after recording them. The second one isn't a backpack per se, but rather a small suitcase. This one is for basic archival practices and digitization. It comes with a small Epson scanner, archival gloves, archival folders and box, how the, a how-to guide, and more. The archival boxes and folders are for the items the library will accept as a donation from the individual participants. Both of these types of kits are given to the community partners of the university library, and they were grant funded. The final example I have comes from the Queen's Memory Project. This entire archive is based on community. The project encourages community members to upload their own records of their life in Queens, New York. Go out and record the histories of their neighbors and attend public events put on by the project. It is at these events that the Queen's Memory Project will digitize photos for their permanent archival collection and give a flash drive that the patron can take home with them. Sounds kind of familiar, right? It is also at these events that volunteers learn how to do oral history interviews and digitize photographs and documents. 
These are just a few examples of events from around the country similar to our scan days. I'm sure there are way more out there that I did not mention. And I'd love to hear from you all if you do anything similar to these events or a scan day. So here we are at the end of this webinar. Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn about our scan day events. I hope you come away with a better idea of what we do at the North Dakota State Library and can use the information provided to create your own local history event. If you are from a North Dakota library or other organization within the state and would like a scan day, please let me know. We have dates available yet for this year. We also have a scan day FAQ sheet that I will send out with this recording and the slides. For those who might be curious as to what we give our libraries or organizations when they need more information. Finally, all of the images used in the webinar are from our North Dakota Memories Collection on Digital Horizons, which was created from the images from our Scan Day events. Otherwise, if you have any questions, you can ask me now or send me an email, ndsltrain at nd.gov. Thank you again for your time today. So one of the questions is where we purchase our flash drives. We were able to purchase them from Vistaprint, I believe. And um, all of our flash drives have our logo and our website engraved on them as well. Uh, we don't have funders for it because we are a state institution. So we are government funded um, and it's within our budget for now at least, um, but I'm sure you'd be able to get funders for this type of event pretty easily. And I'd be happy to send you the release form and I can send the metadata form out as well that we use for this event. Thank you for your time, have a good day.